Have you ever pondered the complexity of borders and the conflicts they can ignite? In the early 19th century, the Treaty of Yandabu in 1826 fashioned the modern-day border between India and Myanmar. This seemingly arbitrary line on a map had profound consequences for the people living there. It divided communities of the same ethnicity and culture. The Nagas of Nagaland and Manipur, along with the Kukichin Mizo communities of Manipur and Mizoram, found themselves split between two nations, without their consent. Imagine waking up one day to find a border running through your backyard, your community, your identity. These invisible lines, drawn in the corridors of power, shaped the lives of thousands, dictating who they could visit, where they could work, and even who they were in the eyes of the world. This historical backdrop sets the stage for the contemporary issues we face today, now, what if I told you that people living on either side of this border could travel up to 16 kilometers into each other's country without a visa? Yes, you heard that right. Introduced in the year 2018, the Free Movement Regime, or FMR, was a part of the Narendra Modi government's Act East policy. This policy aimed at improving relations with the nations of Southeast Asia, but its implementation saw an almost year-long delay primarily due to the Rohingya refugee crisis that began in August 2017. The FMR allowed border residents to venture up to 16 kilometers into the neighboring country without requiring a visa. All they needed was a border pass, valid for a year, which permitted them to stay in the other country for about two weeks per visit. But, this cross-border freedom, however, has not been without its problems. Could a policy aimed at fostering unity and cooperation also be a breeding ground for conflict and crime? It's a question many are asking as we delve into the challenges posed by the free movement regime. Security forces have been wrestling for decades with extremist groups conducting hit-and-run operations from concealed bases in the Chin and Sagaing regions of Myanmar. The ease of cross-border movement, even before the FMR was established, was often flagged for promoting drug trafficking and the illegal export of wildlife body parts. In May of 2023, a conflict erupted between the majority Maite and the tribal Kukizo communities in Manipur, a conflict directly linked to the free movement of Myanmar nationals into India. It's a stark reminder that policies designed to bridge gaps can sometimes widen them instead. In light of these challenges, the FMR is now under reconsideration. So, what happens when borders, once permeable, begin to close up again? With the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, the free movement regime was suspended in April of 2020. This suspension was extended following the military coup in Myanmar in February of 2021. The changing political landscape has had dire consequences. The civil war in Myanmar forced an estimated 40,000 people into Mizoram, a state that welcomed them due to their ethnic affiliation. However, not all regions were as welcoming. The Manipur government, for instance, staunchly opposed the FMR. In September 2023, Manipur's chief minister, Nong Thombam Biran Singh, attributed ethnic violence in the state to the free movement of Myanmar nationals into India and urged the Ministry of Home Affairs to put an end to the FMR. As we can see, the India-Myanmar border issue is a complex web of historical ties, current political situations and future uncertainties. Borders may be lines on a map, but they are also lines that connect and divide people, cultures and nations. We've explored the historical context of the India-Myanmar border, the introduction and challenges of the free movement regime, and the current situation. We've seen how policies like the FMR can have unintended consequences impacting security, migration, and inter-ethnic relations. As we continue to grapple with these issues, let us remember that at the heart of the matter are people, their lives, and their homes.